first. Hey, this is Kirk. And this is Bird. It's the Kirk and Bird Show. We had the break in with a special episode just to talk about Nick Saban and his comments regarding NIL and the responses we're hearing from Jimbo Fisher, Coach uh, Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. But um, I also just want to get Kirk's take on this and I'll give my, my thoughts on it. So for those of you who haven't heard, uh, Kirk, do you want to give him a little, just a brief summary of what, what Coach Saban said? Yeah, I think it was yesterday evening. Um, he was at an event for major Alabama boosters in Birmingham, and he was talking. Uh, he talked, you know, for a few minutes about NIL, and he basically talked about the fact that um, what he thought was that um, NIL was being used inappropriately um, and that what teams were doing uh, were buying players, giving them a certain amount of money. Um, he basically said that they had 25 players at Alabama make, I believe it was 2.5 million. And at the end, uh, he pointed out that uh, Texas A&M um, spent $31 million and bought every single one of their recruits. You could chime in about what he said about Jackson State and um, Deion Sanders. I did not hear that part. I've got some thoughts. I've got some strong thoughts, but I will say this. He's already come out with an apology, and you were playing it. Um, I think the biggest mistake that he made, forget about philosophy, is you praise in public, you criticize in, in private. He could have talked about that whole thing. I do not think he should have brought Jimbo Fisher up. So um, I'm, I'm anxious to get your take on it. We were talking on the phone earlier. And I was, I mean, we were going back and forth, of course, cordially, but passionately. I said, we should be recording this. So, um, you know, what's your take on what Nick Saban said? Um, and this goes into NIL is morphing into a lot of different things. It's probably going to look a lot different, but, you know, yeah. So, so what's your take? So, so we got into it a little bit on the phone, very professional and cordial, because oh, yeah. I think your view was, and you said this, and I'll let you defend it, but you said you you didn't, you said you could understand where Coach Saban was coming from. You could kind of understand. And you know what? I understand, but what I, I don't agree, and what I understand is he's now pouting, and he even said it. He wants a level playing field. Well, guess what? It's never been a level playing field. And guess what? He always had the advantage. It wasn't level for Alabama compared to Georgia Tech. It wasn't level for Alabama even against Vanderbilt in his own conference. So now he wants parity. But it was, it, was, it was okay not to have parity before. So that was one of his points. But the thing that really got me is when you start talking about other programs versus how you did it. He called out Texas A&M, a former assistant of his, okay, who he has to compete with in the SEC West. All right, who beat him, all right, first former assistant coach on his staff to beat him. He called them out, and what he said was, you know, they spent $31 million and basically bought their players. Basically, he said they pooled their money, alumni, different groups pooled their money, and then they said, now let's, let's pull the money and then let's give that out to the athletes and then we'll assign different, I guess, marketing opportunities, NIL opportunities for them. Then he also talked about, Deion Sanders um, and having one of the top recruits in the country who decommitted from Florida State and committed to Jackson State um, because he was getting a million dollars. And, and the way he said, he's like, you know, you got to division one kid. I don't, I mean, the, that's stupid. Division Deion one can do that all he going, wants. Totally different with Texas saying and, and okay. that. The, the one nuance is what he was saying is they were taking a collective pool getting an outside marketing firm, putting it all together and slotting the players. And that's when you and I started talking. Okay, it was 31 million. You know, legally you could sign 25. A lot of guys sign 28, 29 because kids don't make grades and this, that, the other. And then they'll gray shirt some of them and things like that. So what the point I was telling you is um, the meritocracy. 
right? Because when you've got 25 recruits, at the top of your board, you've got those recruits. And at the bottom of your board, you've got those recruits. And I don't know how they did it, Texas a and I'm sure they're not telling people, but what's that equal? I mean, 25 players, $31 million. I mean, that's a million point two or three per player. Um, I think it should be more of a meritocracy. What I did agree with, with what's What, what Saban, do you mean by meritocracy? Explain that to some of our listeners. You Saban's, big Virginia Tech words. <laughs> you, Saban said it. He said, look, we're going to give you the, we, we've told our kids, hire your agents and go out there and earn as much NIL money as you can. He said, they're not pulling it. The point that you made is the wide scale cheating that has been going on in college football forever. And the thing is, is that. Well, I say, how dare Nick Saban? How, how dare Nick Saban, who you got to know? Because he's happened. scared. And, 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 I'll and, tell you why. But what I'm scared. saying is, but yeah, well, that's the point. My point is, don't try to justify Nick Saban. I'm gonna tell you what it I'm is. Not trying Nick, to Alabama has got has gotten the best players routinely for years, and right. you're not telling me it was all clean. And I'm not saying Nick Saban did it. I'm saying the the booster or whoever took part in that process, however they got there, they got there. But that's not a problem. And look, everybody knows this goes on. It goes on not just at you know, uh, uh, Alabama or Texas A&M or Texas, but it goes on, it goes on in Duke basketball. It goes on at UCLA. It goes on probably at the University of Richmond. It goes on at different degrees and different levels. And right. the, the, the issue I have with it is Nick Saban is talking about uh, merit. Oh, you're talking about merit. Like, you don't have a problem with Nick Saban being the highest paid coach. Every coach in and in, 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 even every power five doesn't make the same amount of money. But you're you're Nick saying, Saban would not make saying, that money if he lo- if he lost. Right. But you're saying, well, yeah, well, that's how it should be if you're considered the best. Yeah. But but Nick Saban isn't saying that. Nick Saban is saying, well, it should be even, you know, uh he's saying there should be parity in how the money is distributed. And, and what and part of that point, I think what Nick Saban is really two things I think he's doing. Nick Saban realizes he coaches at Alabama. And this system has worked great when it's just a bag man. But what he's realizing is, and he's got all these other people which kind of, gonna probably try to make excuses for him, is Texas A and M has oil money. Alabama's a poor state. Okay, I'm they don't sure they have that alumni that Alabama does, probably has boosters and alumni that do very, very well. But I'll tell you what, Texas A&M has oil money. Texas has gobs of money. And you know what? If they can afford to, however, look, however they structure it, if they can give out $31 million and you can only give out 2 or 5 or 6 or whatever, that's the game, bro. That's the game. Well, and you make a good point. There's four... Fortune 500 companies in the state of Alabama, and the biggest by far is Regions Financial, the mortgage company. That's the biggest company in Alabama. Vulcan Materials, Protective Life, Health South. Now, look at this, and this is going to blow your mind. This is what Nick Saban's probably scared about, and that is get a load of this. Exxon, McKesson, AT&T. Phillips, Valero, Dell, Cisco, the food Cisco company, um, American Airlines. I mean, they've got over, they've got 50 companies, corporate dollars, okay? Texas A&M, you know, if you're going to Texas, it's big between Texas and Texas, you know, the, the, the Horns and the Aggies. All right, they're crazy about that. But by the way, they have some other great programs. They got Texas Christian. They got Texas Tech. Um, you know, SMU. Houston. Houston's right. a good program. Right. But so I think that what Saban is saying is that um, I think that he, he's having some difficulty in the fact that um, you're guaranteeing a player 
in NIL. You're structuring it later. Have you heard about the kid in 2024 that, that signed an $8 million NIL deal? That means he's no, a sophomore. No, I ain't heard about that. He's a sophomore. Okay. All right. He gets $350,000 now. I don't know how you give that to a 16-year-old. Don't know. But, um, and then he gets two or three million. So uh, one of the points that Saban made was this. What if one of you big donors, you know, there's a lot of money in cars, by the way. The guy that used to own the Dolphins was a, a big car dealership guy. Those car dealership families, man, make a lot of money. And, um, you know, just whatever. Let's just say it's a major shareholder of Regents Financial, and you put together something that basically says, okay, they're going to promote Regents Financial. They get there, they don't play enough, and then they transfer. And he said that. So the thing is, is that I don't think we know how this is going to work. I don't have a problem with the players getting money for their name, image, and likeness because the players have been used. College sports has been using them. Not only the coaches, the presidents, the sneaker companies, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, parking, beer, whatever. So it's but, not but, NIL. But Kurt, but Kurt, okay, so one, one other thing. All right, so I'll get uh, – let me get – cover one other thing. I didn't say this. Deion Sanders said it. And if you take it in context <clears throat> of where Nick Saban said it, I can tell, also say why he probably said it. And he's done this before. Uh, about two months ago, he was giving a speech somewhere and he was talking about this. But today it's a bigger deal because he called out to coaching. But, but Deion Sanders even pointed this out. Nick Saban wasn't really talking to Deion or talking to or about necessarily Jimbo Fisher. You know who he was talking to? He was talking to his donors. He was at a donor's function. But you know what he was trying to do is challenge them. He put that out there to say, look, Texas A&M is paying this much. Right. What are we going to do? And yeah, I don't, and it. what you, some people, you might be saying the format with which it's done. That doesn't matter. It, it, the, the thing is, he needs the dollars to compete. The other thing I'd say is this, when it comes to, uh, Nick Saban, um, you know, let me say, you, you mentioned athletes. What if, a, what if the athlete comes in any transfers? Well, guess what? Those, you know, Nick Saban, again, I am disgusted because he shouldn't be talking. He is the highest paid coach. Every time somebody else gets a hold on, contract, hold on. contract he, highest, hold on. And, and look, he deserves to be the look, highest paid coach. I didn't say he should, absolutely. And you know what? If that eighth grader or 10th grader deserves to get that money, somebody was willing to pay it. And look, the money sounds crazy to you and I, but guess what? To a billionaire, a multi, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars, that's nothing. I'll just get one less boat. I, you know, it's not the money, to, but if they can have the pride, if a Texas oil guy, if Jerry Jones can give that money to Arkansas and say, we are a football pot, that's worth it to them. They pay for it. But now, guess what? The other thing is this. Yes, yeah, that kid could transfer or that kid could not, could be a bust, but it's the same thing with a coach. There are coaches that get jobs, right? All right, so uh, uh, they get jobs and they don't work out and you have to let them go. And guess what? They get to keep that full salary. They're not like- Not always. Not like NFL There's football buyouts. Players. There's if, buyouts. If they, There's clauses. There are buyouts, but I'm saying if you fire them, they in general get their-, their time. Or guess what? They say, I don't even need your money because I'm going to leave Michigan State for LSU because it's, they're going to pay me more and I have a better opportunity to win. And they can leave those kids. They can do that. They can promise those kids. And then you know what? Up until recently, kids couldn't transfer, you know. And, and and Nick Saban is one of the coaches. Before recent in the past, people didn't realize college football scholarships were not four and five year deals. It was a one year renewable scholarship. And if That's a you big weren't point. making a the grade, lot of buddy, people do not realize it's a one. It's if you weren't one making the grade, they got rid of you. And all I'm talking, all of my point is this: if you listen to Nick Saban's comments, the only thing I want you to do. Go back, listen to it two or three times, and change the word athlete, football player, student athlete 
change it to coach. Okay. Change the word to coach. And does it sound right? And right. it's not going to be right for these, these Jimbo, anybody, you know, they, they have no perspective when they talk about people in the money, but they don't look at if what they, if you got strength coaches making over a million dollars and you've got all these people getting the money off again, I say they, we talked about this, we had a long discussion about there are no minor leagues for football, but they are the minor leagues. And basically these coaches shouldn't say anything because the schools should be paying them, not necessarily these these NIL deals, what they should be getting. You know, just, and, and again, you got Peter Wark and those guys that were getting shoes or people get tattoos and they're getting suspended. That was ridiculous. But outside of that, the schools should be paying them. Do you know LSU and these schools are spending $25 million on just the locker room? Because they got so much money, so much money. I guarantee you the schools and the kids would rather get that money than get that locker room or you pay the, some extra coaches a whole bunch of money because the, the labor is off their backs. Yeah, I understand. I completely understand. I mean, you think about the different situations. Like when St. Peter's went on the run in the NCAA, one of their kids signed uh, a deal with Buffalo Wild Wings, you know, and it's like, if that kid made a hundred thousand dollars, I'll guarantee you he sold way more wings than that. And the other thing is, is he talked about the NIL being put into a um, a marketing firm like a collective. Well, guess what? That's what college is about. Virginia Tech is with Learfield Sports. They used to be with ISP International mm-hmm. Sports Property. They manage the advertising. Okay, they manage all of the contracts for the radio network, game signage. The voice of the Hokies are paid by that company. And, um, you know, the all of those things. So, you know, a coach's show, that compensation is from an outside party, you know. And I do not think that, you know, the, the cars that they get. You know, by the way, Alabama, I think it was like five or six years ago, I was reading up on this. It was like seven or eight of their defensive players got, you know, nice rides, like 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar cars. And the the thing that I wonder about is that 16 year old. Okay, what's it gonna do to him? Could you imagine at 16 if someone said, you got $350,000. Now, I don't know if his parents can give it to him or how that works. And by the way, the attorney for him said he did not have to sign with a specific school. I don't know how that works. Correct me, but I'm just thinking our whole institution of higher education and college football the way we know it, which I love, I think it's going out the window. I think we're going to become, in some ways, the minor league for football. And basketball, but it is the minor league. And what, you, what is I know, going but it's going to officially window? be the minor league. But 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 why is it going out of the window? It's always been out of the window. The only thing is, it was you just didn't know it. The oh, everybody Reggie knew Bush's it. It just wasn't above got, ground. Oh, I know. So why do you have a problem with it? Now, Reggie Bush's family got a house. That's one person that we know about. How many kids, parents? Families get, and we know it happens. We know it happens. And the thing, I, the only thing I said is they, the, the reason they had to hide it is because it was against a rule. If it wasn't ever a, not a rule, now look, back in the day, maybe no, I, I would. You're nailing, it, it, would, you're would, nailing would, it. Would, look, 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 I may not have had a problem with it if it was like still, hey, coaches were still you know, teaching classes at the college and they're barely making money and they coach for the love of the game. I'm not saying these guys don't, but everybody was poor then. But once you start signing billion dollar TV contracts, that money is flowing down to everybody but the workers, the laborers, the ones who are literally dying right. from this. And I understand, for instance, all right, Petco is a San Diego based company, okay? And by the way, Petco signed a big NIL deal with a kid. All right, guess what? Today, Reggie Bush would still have his Heisman Trophy, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 
Reggie Bush mm-hmm. gets on some Petco commercials. He's on their ads on the internet. Hulu, regular cable and all that. And then his family can be taken care of legally. I get that. But when we make this professional at an early, how about the kid that left for Ohio State early so he could do NI or whatever? What about the college experience? What about the value of an education? Now, hold on. I'm not talking about the dollar value of an education like how much money you can make. What about the value of getting a bachelor's degree, going to school and earning that, and the lessons that you learn? And when I think of kids can't be kids, you know, people making two or $3 million, Rusty, how do they stay motivated? How do they stay motivated? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, Kirk. If If they take it, you know, more money, more problems. If that's what comes with it, they got to deal with it. So, And you know what? A lot might blow it, but it's a lot of guys that make it to the league and blow it. You know, and they went, they played football in college for four or five years. They played college basketball. They blow it. You know, it, 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 you know what? Hopefully you don't think this is going to make it worse? In place. You don't think this is going to make it worse? But well, define worse. You, you, you think it was better two or three, five years? It wasn't. It was bad then. The only thing now is, right, we just know more about it. But it's not worse. It's not worse. And, and, and look, I, I think, I understand when people are saying, because it, it sounds crazy. It sounds ridiculous. But nobody is complaining when a child actor makes a million dollars. Nobody says he shouldn't make it. But that's because they all spend it on therapists when they're 25 and 30. Okay, right. Well, you know what? Let me ask you this. You know what? The the kid that doesn't make it to the league, he'll have money to spend it on a therapist. You take Steve Jobs and uh, and Wozniak. If they would have been given $50 million, all right, and they were not eating food from a can and living in their parents' garage in California, do you think they would have worked as hard? Tough question. What comes to your mind? Don't think about it too much. If Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak that started Apple, you know, if they would have had a hundred million dollars or fifty million dollars, which by the way, to start a company is not a great amount of company, especially a huge company. How motivated do you think they would have been? Do you? Th- what do you think would have happened? Which just well, first of all, well, well, first of all, why did they get the hundred million? Did they get it because they were brilliant computer people? Computer like yes. Yeah, they but they hadn't proved anything. They hadn't proved anything. They had it proved doesn't it. matter. If it doesn't mean they still look, okay. Let me ask you this. Did Apple stop at the first iPod? No, I understand what you're saying. No, but... they kept going. No, they didn't they 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 are still the iPods doing, will put them on the you're, map you're still the doing stuff. I know, but what I'm saying is Apple didn't stop. And just because they might have actually, it might have been better. Maybe they could have gotten us there quicker if they had the money for the infrastructure to get their company really going. The motivation has to be intrinsic. You know, you can sign that first NBA contract, but that doesn't get you the second one. Do you think LeBron James is not as good, better off, as good off as somebody that has a four-year degree that went to Duke for four years and played in the league? LeBron James didn't go to college. LeBron James got a car. You know, while I was in high school and 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 people complained, he turned out okay. That was LeBron James. Okay, but that's LeBron. It, 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 people have different stories. You know, like it's I'm sure you went to school with plenty of guys that went to four years of Virginia Tech, got a degree, played basketball. The, 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 and that's a fine experience. But would they switch places with LeBron? The thing is this: we get people get upset about these things when the money sounds so dramatic and so far out there, I guarantee, like you're saying it's out of control, but will we be saying any of this if the biggest deals that anybody got was $500? No, I, I, I know. I understand what you're saying. The market dictates what you receive. The free market dictates it. And by the way, whenever somebody says it is ridiculous that so-and-so makes X amount of money. In our country, in a free market capitalism, Patrick Mahomes does not sign a half billion dollar contract 
unless he's worth it. The NFL, the Kansas City Chiefs, the networks, the companies, the car companies, the beer, the pizza, they're going to make 50 billion to 100 billion off of him. And if they're paying an athlete like um, the quarterback of Georgia Tech, the Braves just won him the way Braves gear. He's going to sell more Braves hat. I don't know what the value of the deal is, but it's going to pay for it. I mean, um, I understand that, but it kind of just, to me, what I'm worried about is just taking the innocence, you, the innocence. But yeah, young. but you, you're, th- you're, you're acting like it was innocent. Let me tell you something. And I understand you're, you, you know, you have this, this vision of, of, of what it probably used to be or feel like. But the reality is, Kirk, it's not just like that even in, and it's just today's game. I understand. I'm not, not saying you're wrong to feel that way. It does feel that way. But you know what? It's starting well before they get to college. In high school, kids are going to different high schools or they're getting benefits to play for this AAU. I'm sure Boo Williams worked hard to get where he is. But I also know Boo Williams provides a little bit more for his basketball players than some other AAU programs. And he's built it up. But you know, if 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 Boo, hold on, that's a whole getting, side. That's a whole. Well, no, no, it's not. But no, but I'm, but I'm no, but what I'm saying is this: if if the kid in today can go play for Boo because they got a contract with Nike and they're going to get fresher gear, they're going to go to Boo. Not you and I when we start an AAU team here in Northern Virginia, and we're just getting parents to donate. And to, it, 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 that's just how it works. It's a free market. All right. So the kid at Jackson starts, State. And so let me ask you. So my, my point is this: you're talking about college. What I'm saying is it's going on in high school, and it's even down to the youth level. Like they're you're going to recruit. Money. I know if you can get them. If you, I'm not saying my. I'm saying this. If I can get this kid to play on my youth football team because he's really, really good, or this high school and we can use this address, it's just happening. And it's been happening. Yes, but again, how do you, like the Jackson State kid that was going to go to Florida, and let's say one alumni or two or three put a million-dollar package together Jackson, Mississippi is the capital of Mississippi. Let's just say he's going to do some advertising for several companies and that million dollars is going to turn into good for him. However, what about the other kids on that team? What about the other kids on that team? What about the kids on that team? All right. That almost maybe are very close to as good as him because there's plenty of players that are recruited by Florida state. And there's players like Walter Payton, and other players that come out that are better than those big boys. What about in the second or third year, some kid from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, that went to Jackson State, turns out to be a better player, helps them win more, and he's not getting any of that. How's that work? That's my meritocracy thing. At some point, if they've got Life life is a B word is what it's called. Yeah, I mean, but you're right, but that's it. I mean, look, I, I'm not saying it's great. I'm just saying that's how it works, though, in this in this in this world, you know. And and unfortunately, sometimes it's 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 not fair, but for the most part, it's mo- usually not fair, you know. You somebody look, you could be a smart. You went to Virginia Tech, and somebody's going to assume that because you went to Virginia Tech, maybe your degree is worth more. Or better than someone that went. Well, that's to a bunch of garbage, the, man. I know people would. I know, but smart. what I'm saying is this. But what I'm saying is we're, we're all kind of put in these different categories. That's but true. You, I can, I can, I, I can come out of VCU, Virginia State, Thomas Nelson, and be work as hard, be as brilliant as anybody. Like I worked at the State Department. There are people I work with with masters and PhDs from Ivy League schools, and we do the same job. We do the same job. Okay. Should they feel bad because because they make as little as I do? It, they don't make a lot because they're equal to what I do? Or should I feel great because I... It doesn't matter. But we're worth what we're worth. And that's our value, you know? Uh, look, this is a great topic. We Look, 
we're just starting this conversation. I'd love for our audience, the people to tell us what we got right, what we got wrong. I think our main point is this, Kirk, and you can say what you what you, you mean, and you can sum it up. Kirk is, 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 is and you said this before, like you, you wish it was just like for the love of the game and the education, and we didn't no, have no, all no, these things. But no, what I, don't put words in my mouth. I believe the players should make as much money as they, sh- they can. It's not fair. Um, love Frank Beamer, okay? Now, nobody's squeaky clean unless you're stupid, all right? Stuff goes on. Frank Beamer ran a very clean program, but not perfect. But, you know, when Frank Beamer, I think most Frank Beamer ever made was like three million bucks. All right. And you got kids that are funding that project to redo the stadium. You know, we got a Los Angeles was a little like highway going into Blacksburg now instead of a little road that used to go a bunch of a bunch of body shops and junkyards. Football (laughs) did all that. And they did it on the backs of honestly guys like your brother. All right, so I don't have a problem with players getting compensated, you know? Just think about this. Number seven, Virginia Tech version, uh, jersey. If Michael Fake got a dollar fifty for every one of those, they're sold, and his estate got it. I believe in that. That's all good. What I'm saying, though, is the traditional things um, – I do worry about like our walk on program at Virginia Tech. Um, But this also can open some doors. The two young ladies at Fresno State who are in a non revenue sport and were the very first to sign an NIL deal, it's because they were marketable through sports and they're getting a lot of money. I don't Mm -hmm. think it's a bad thing. I just think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. So I, again, and I, 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 the thing I like about it's, you know, I, I don't think this is perfect at all. All I'm saying, I, 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 some of the good parts I do also see in NIL, you know, people getting what they want, but it's those division three, division two athletes that division three doesn't officially give any scholarships, but if they can make up that difference by promoting a local uh thing in, in that in the town where that school is sure. and they can bridge the gap between no scholarship and some scholarship or more some money to do things i think that's great uh, the last thing i say is this look i don't know how the 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 the, the, the sandwich gets made i don't know necessarily everything that's put in it or or, or, or how we, you put it together but in the end if it's a good sandwich i'm going to enjoy it and my point is if in the end, if Virginia Tech wins a national championship in football, I don't think you're going to feel bad or this way. You're just going to be happy as an alum. The joy that Virginia Tech football brings you every Saturday. Imagine if it's the best program in the country. And how you all got there, I don't think you're going to be lamenting that the, the night they win. You're not going to be saying, well, I really feel bad. Like, I don't know if all those kids are legit. No, you're not going to. You're going. I'm sorry, but if I extrapolate this program, Virginia Tech has no shot of winning a national championship. Uh, -uh, it's not going to happen because we've got. There's a lot of money in Virginia, but it's General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman, all of your big contractors, and they are not going to put Northrop Grumman. You know, the builds airplanes and Lockheed's Maryland. No, that's not going to happen. More like Texas, California, you know, the, the, the Oklahoma, the southeastern Georgia's got a lot of Fortune 500s. So I, I know what you're saying, but it's not 10 or 12 teams are the only ones that are going to be able to win. It. But it's always it's always 10 or 12 teams. It's always 10 or 12 teams. It's always you haven't been able to compete with Alabama behind the table in ever. Okay, and that yeah, we whipped that Alabama's butt thirty-eight to eight in the Music City Bowl in nineteen ninety-eight. Was that when she was that? Who was coaching then? <laughs> look, uh, look, this is the thing. The Seattle uh, running back was there. I mean, we we could compete. Well, we it's compete. Uh, listen, you could compete. And listen, I I wouldn't even discount that you can't win a national championship. To what it's going to take is understanding how this system works 
and how you can make it work for you. There are plenty of smart coaches out there that wouldn't say what Nick Saban said, that have already figured out how to use the transfer portal. Like it can be done if Virginia Tech or UVA or Wake Forest or Michigan, or if you figure out how to make this work in the end, it doesn't matter how much, because money doesn't make you happy. It doesn't matter how much money you make. If you go to Alabama and you can't beat these kids out, you're not going to be happy. The money won't matter and you're going to get in the transfer port. Okay. And that's life. And that's yeah. life. And if Virginia Tech can figure this out or VCU can figure it out, you know, look, I was disappointed when I looked at VCU and we lost some kids in the transfer portal. But you know what? I was also like this when I saw we got two kids from Michigan. Well, that all became illegal. Now, without a personal attack, because Nick Saban's a very competitive guy, he does a lot of wonderful things. Mm -hmm. He has a great um, graduation uh, rate. He also has a program specifically built for the guys who don't make it in football to go out and make a living based on their education and network and things like this. So we're not saying, but is what Nick Saban said hypocritical? Now, I did not ask you to say, is Nick Saban a hypocrite? Because we all say stupid things. I do uh, dozens of times a day. My question is, was that hypocritical? Absolutely. And you don't have to hear me say it. Go watch Jimbo Fisher's press conference. Jim, Jimbo Fisher, what he said is, this guy has no, and, and again, Jimbo Fisher was on the staff. He said, go talk to his former assistants. This guy, who we created and we talk about as a God, is a God because he got, he knows how to over, get take advantage of the system. He said, this guy, he actually said, what did he say? He said, go dig into his past. Go dig into his past. And, and you, 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 you that, and that's what got me is this dude criticized somebody else because they might have a way to, to even the playing field against what he's doing. You look, if we, a former assistant coach, who's in the game is telling you, no, look at Nick Saban's history, dig up on him. And he's probably, he's saying he could be the worst. That's what, that's all I needed to hear. And I didn't need to hear it, but I did. And I thought, you know, before I saw it, I was like, this is how I feel. And, 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 and his former assistant backed it up. Hey man, I'm telling you, this makes me think of so many different things. You, you, we, we, we already just made a taping and we always ask people who do you have on your phone that you could hit up? Well, we both have Bryce Duke. Man, we could call Bryce Duke right now and get him a modeling thing, kind of like the old Abercrombie and Fitch. The kid would probably make more money off of that than he'd ever make me at playing football. And then I think about some of these other kids just selling pizza you know, for the three or four years of fame. Great example, and let's close it out. You look at the fame that Ronald Curry has for a guy that I don't think Ronald Curry got drafted, and he played seven years, but that that brand that he has, that he NIL, he would have gone crazy. So it will be interesting to see where this will go. It'll be interesting to see where this will go. But I do not think it's fair. I do not think it's fair for kids to go to school and, you know, not have enough money to, to take a girl out on a date, you know, not have enough money to eat, you know, not have enough money to go out and buy some new clothes uh, because they're on. But you know why I was like that? But you know, I was like that. It was about control. It was about control. It was, it was about the NCAA and about coaches controlling kids. And, and, and of course it wasn't right. It wasn't, it was actually, we should be more disappointed as a people that we allowed that to go on for 50 years for so long when people were declining. It's just like women's soccer, you know, the US women's soccer team not fairly being able to be compensated when they were much more successful uh, than the men's program. And, 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 and so it's a, it's a lot of stuff, but like it's no, nobody did the women a favor by now making it balanced and equal. They had to fight for it. And so these people, these kids have had to fight with, you know, Ed O'Bannon, all these situations. So it's just becoming almost fair. Last thing I'll say is this. Again, I like the style of folks like Lane Kiffin, again, a former Nick Saban assistant who will keep it real about Nick Saban, but 
Lane figured out this stuff, man. Lane figured it out like the way he's. He, 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 they had a uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Archie Manning. You know, they he 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 when he invited them out, like they had a Manning in the end zone. Like he gets it how he's recruiting. Like he he I think he went on to he he has a, a Twitter. He didn't do Twitter yet. One Twitter account. I think the only person he followed was 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 the Manning kid. And and they uh, uh, and if he can understand and do it. That's a threat to Nick Saban. That's a threat. Well, yeah. And I think Nick Saban, um, I think what he said, um, you could see the conversation. He was picking up, picking up, picking up, and he's competitive. And when you only got four Fortune 500 companies, um, Mm -hmm. you know, he's got to be worried. And uh, what the game's going to look like, I think, you know, and I got this from somebody. But I've, I've thought about this. We're going to go to super conferences. We're going to have super conferences. And, you know, a lot is is going to change. And, you know, we, we sound so old, but, man, so much of just the classic way that we used to do things is gone. It's just like there is some degree of um, the um, amateurism of college sports i know the big money it's hypocritical it's not fair but there's something about it and also the value of the the class kirk let me just say something the 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 classic way of doing stuff was for people to vote on who was the best college football team people still don't want to have a playoff people still look you're right just just head towards these big super just like they shouldn't even have division one a uh or, or the fbs because it's not it's just four conferences if i'm the pac-12 why am i even a part of this i can barely get anybody in the playoffs in the acc outside of clemson eh, look I, it's never been fair it's not fair that notre dame just gets to pop up because they have a good season and they don't have to affiliate with a football conference a lot of it is just not fair it's not fair it, you know, and, and and again, old school. Like I don't see anything great about the fact that kids didn't get anything. Like what, what what was so great about you going undefeated and not having a chance to be called national champion? Like college football has not ever really gotten it right. College bowls, that whole system is ridiculous. But look at it now. You can have a losing losing record and go play in a bowl on a Tuesday at two o'clock. So yeah, it's it's it's. It, when we break it down, we love this. The reason fo- college football is so um, loved is because it's the affiliation with uh, a state or your school you attended or your neighborhood. It's that, that's what it, that's what college football does. It's even greater than what you can get with the NFL. And so that has been relied upon and taken advantage of for years. I, I'll close with this. You know, it, college football has a lot of things to fix. This is just a start. The NCAA has never been good. And earlier you mentioned like people were breaking laws. No, they weren't breaking laws. They were breaking rules. None of the stuff that people were doing, Reggie Bush, that wasn't a law. Maybe some individual states have certain laws about breaking. But those were NCAA rules meant to hold people and kids down. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, And be used. And if you think about the kids that were used that got nothing out of it, no degree, um, you know, no quality of life, no network, no connections. Um, like I said, free market capitalism is free market capitalism. If, if, if a kid can help, you know, um, Minecraft, you know, you know, they're a popular whatever, and they can make Minecraft, you know, a hundred million bucks and they're willing to pay them a couple million bucks I believe in it. It's free market capitalism. I just worry about, you know, the equity, the meritocracy, Jackson yeah. State, that kid that gets a million dollars. You could split that 40 ways. I believe $25,000 a player. Uh, and that makes me sound like a communist, but I'm just, you know, I. Yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying. But, uh, you know, the other thing is, um, yeah, I mean, for some people, you're right. Education is a value, but I'll tell you what, education doesn't necessarily carry the same weight it did, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Like you don't have to get that college degree. Now you're right. There's some great experiences that we all had, but you know right. what? 
everybody that goes to college, if they don't graduate, if they didn't get anything out of it, then that, that's on them. But it's a lot of, it, I bet it's more people that get something out of that college experience, you know, than those that don't. And you know what? For some people, football might have been their only way to get to college. And if they didn't take advantage of it, it just wasn't meant to be. But at least, you know what? They still might be able to rock a, 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 a Chick-fil-A bowl, <laughs> bowl ring, you know, 20 years from now, tell the stories about their time on, on this whatever football uh, program they were in or, 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 or campus they walked on. And if they didn't get a degree, it still could have been some of the best years of their life. And the last thing is with college expenses, expensive as it is, you know, you don't, it's, it's not the same. Like I, don't, I, don't, I, used, I grew up knowing that I had to go to college. My mom just said, I didn't know I couldn't go. My mom made, knew, I just knew we would be going. But you know, nowadays, if you don't have to go to college and it will be great, but if there's another way to get you it. You don't, home, you don't. There's a lot right. of people in IT. But you're right, you're right. There's a lot of people, right. in people in IT that are people. like, get your certs. You get yep. four or five certs. You can go straight to the workplace. Don't waste your money on college. The thing is, though, it's just this experience. Why do you want oh, to go work at 18? You go to class four of the great, 15 yeah. hours a week. You know, it's there's I fun. Mean, you're young. You're dumb. You do some of the stupidest things you've done in your yeah. life. And unless you're a knucklehead, you don't get in trouble. And I'm worried about, mm -hmm. you know, like when a billionaire like uh, Elon Musk says, you don't need to go to college. Well, he went to college. He's got an Ivy League degree. Hypocrisy. He's got a degree from uh, Penn and he went to uh, Stanford for like a month or two. That's where he met all the Yahoo guys that ended up getting them rich anyway. But, uh, you know, again, um, sports is big business. Entertainment is big business. Matter of fact, yeah. today I randomly re um, uh, met a guy and his daughter is um, majoring in music production at NYU. And I said to him, you know what? Entertainment is getting so big that there you go. I mean, it's becoming one of the biggest industries. It's so big and it's so international. We are rambling. So if you're still listening, all right. So what he said was hypocritical. All right. So we got that. Do you think you see some guys going back and suing? over the revenue that they produced. Open-ended question. We'd love your comments about that. My answer is yes, sir, Rick. I think there's going to be guys going back that have sold gear over and over and over for the big schools, the big, big, big schools, you know, Herschel Walker, 44 Syracuse jerseys. They, they let Rob Conrad wear that. But those type of things, I think those will happen. But anyway, Kirk and Bird, we usually don't talk about current events because everybody else does. But we wanted to talk about this because we were talking on the phone today. I was going to the grocery store and we're really going at it. And I said, I wish we could we'd just record this right now. But um, I, I think it will develop. And do you think in five years from now, this NIL will look totally different? I think it'll look different because there's already just too much of an outcry in terms of, of them wanting some type of structure and format around it. So somebody, somebody who's bitter is going to make sure that happens. They're going to go, they, you know, they, they're going to put some frameworks in place. But even with that, I think there's always going to be a way around <clears throat> uh, doing whatever people want to do. And I, I just don't want to hear those people like Nick Saban, who's taken advantage of the system, made as much money as he could and, and complained. That's it. I'll close with this. Uh, what time is it? People don't realize 11.24, how tired we are. The current trajectory, you're going to see an athlete the way it is now. You're going to see an, a, an athlete go into college with a $20 million nil deal so you know and guess what position coach, guess what his position guess coach what? is gonna be like hey coach you need a, you need a, you need a loan it's interesting man it's interesting yeah. you know yeah 
All right. All good. So, uh, be interesting. Uh, he's already backed off. Saban did. You know how he apologized. He didn't totally back off, but um, it's fun. Check stuff. out Jimbo Fisher's. Check out Jimbo Fisher's response. I love it. Yeah, all, all right, a man. bunch of West Virginia boys. <laughs> yep. Yep. Great stuff. All right. Hey, we're, out. we're putting we this wanna... out tomorrow, which is the twentieth. We'll put this out immediately. We usually don't. We don't do live. Um, so, and by the way, we are going to do some live stuff, but we'll be talking about that. All right. Yeah. Look, tell us what we got right. Tell us what Kirk got wrong. And we, we, we look forward to, to hearing your comments. And this has just been a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, Nick Saban. You, you made us talk. All right. Look, he did. And Kirk and Bird doing what we love to do. Just talk sports. So right now I'm going to say Kirk and Bird are out. out.